get started, just to wrap up, a lot of things happened this week. Coach got his 200, 200 career win. We won the Paradise Jam by going 3-0 and and um, ending it with defeating Kansas State, who is ranked number 25. And then Coach Neighbors is off to his best start while being at Arkansas. Um, and then Sailor just was named SEC Freshman of the Week. Um, so with that, we'll get started. Porter, I see your hand raised first, so we'll start with you. <clears throat> Yeah, coach, uh, a lot to unpack this this weekend and, and going three and oh, three games, three days, ending it against uh, Kansas State. And I have to say, just how impressed were you, you coming off that emotional game against Clemson for them to come back and kind of take care of business at Kansas State? And, you know, just your thoughts on the Paradise Jam in, in, in retrospect. Um, more than we could have hoped for when we scheduled the thing. Um, the competition we knew was going to be there, but man, the stuff that happened off the court, you can't script, you know, the kids snorkeling together and diving together and dodging stingrays together and um, all that stuff. That's the stuff that, you know, you don't know how that's going to go. And that stuff went great. And I think it was why we played well on the floor. Um, you know, I, we, we, we caught a little flack for taking our team out on game day. Uh, I mean, I read message boards just like everybody else does. Uh, so I, I thought it was awesome that we could do both, have fun. Our kids were happy. I think they played happy. There were a lot of teams down there that had sun requirements and uh, moratoriums and uh, complete lockdowns uh, while we were there. And, and our kids just really managed their time. We trusted them as coaches. and. Uh, they gave they gave us back uh, our play on the last day, you know when it when it can be ratty, when it can be disjointed, when it can be dysfunctional was the best that we've had all year. So that was a really fun plane ride home, a great experience for our kids. I think winning the championship will help us remember the games more than just the experience, but I think they'll be one in one a, uh, but really, really proud of our leadership. And our followership, you know, our, our kids leading and then our kids followed right along. Everybody kind of took care of their business. And we, one of our themes one night was handle it. And I thought we handled it the entire week we were gone. And to jump to Sailor, you know, she's she's not your leading scorer, but we've talked about her plus minus and just her getting rewarded for what she does on both ends of the court. What does that say about her and also the, the league for actually recognizing that a player and what they mean to your team? Well, I, I think it jumps off the page. And the way Kylie, uh, if, if y'all haven't, I mean, y'all already got to know Kylie. Kylie writes so well. And she, the nomination that she put in there uh, to the league hi highlighted that Gabby Gregory had gotten 35 the night before. She went one for 10 on the same shots. It was the same shots. And Sailor just defended them better. And the one that she made was incredibly difficult after starting 0, and 9, 0 for 9. And what I love about Sailor is she was pissed that she made that one. She was. It was game over. It was. It didn't even matter. She was still pissed. And that's what makes her special. She's not driven by anything other than leading our team in plus minus. She led us in, I mean, for the week. You look at, you look at what she's done the last three games. Her numbers are off the chart. Uh, I would love to have her on my fantasy team because she's stuffing it uh, every stat. But just the the feedback from people that were there watching, there were a lot of teams there, and everybody's just like, wow. I, you know, I saw her one night, she's guarding a guard. The next night, she's guarding a post. The next night, she's blocking shots. Just the um, adaptability that that she brings us. Um, and then, you, you know, like when Kylie mentioned at our meeting this morning that she was freshman of the week, I was like, that was the first time it's even dawned on me that she's a freshman. I, I was like, wait, is she, can she get that? I'm like, well, wait, yeah, she's a freshman. So I don't know. She's, uh, she's really starting to get comfortable with herself, her teammates. She's got a lot of confidence starting to show what we've seen in practice ever since she's been here. Last thing I got, just, we, we kind of see it in the, with the men's game last night, the jet lag coming back from a trip, you know, how's the, the girls been able to handle coming back from, you know, the Virgin Islands, and then getting prepared for Troy on, on Thursday? Most of our sunburns have turned to tans, so that's good. Uh, we were noticeably red uh, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, they turned into bronzing, so 
I haven't seen them yet since we got back. We'll practice today for the first time. There is certainly a lag uh, when you come back from island time. I don't think it's so much the uh, the actual circadian rhythm of your body. I just think it's the way – I mean, nothing's a big deal on those islands. The, nobody's ever in a rush. Your taxi drivers, your food prep people, everybody's like, it'll be okay, man. You're like, no, we got to go. Uh, we got to be there. So I just think there's an adjustment from – you know, waking up and seeing the Caribbean and palm trees and sand and coming back. And it's been nice since we've been back. That was good. But, you know, some of us wore shorts on the plane and we got a really stark reminder when we stepped off that plane that we were back home. But um, it's a real thing. I heard Coach Musk mention it last night. There's no question, you know, that could still be a case for us on Thursday. Hopefully we've had more time to adapt. But, um, you know, obviously with the similarities, playing Troy – actually playing the exact same team. Uh, I just warn you, there could be some of that for us too, because Troy's a, a team that's uh, very, very dangerous. That's all for me. Thank you. Christina. Hey coach. I've just got a pretty general one for you. Just when you look at this eight, no start, just these first few games, just who has surprised you the most? And has anything really has, have you been surprised by anything about how the team is playing as a whole through these games? Um, that's a good question. I I don't think anybody's really surprised, but like like Miriam adjusting back to playing as well as she has, as fast as she has, has been impressive to me. Um, you know, she comes off the bench and gives us an immediate spark against Kansas State. We'd put her in and we drew an inbounds play up for her and she knocked down a three. She blocked three or four shots against Clemson that were key. I, I just think she's adjusting really fast. So not surprised, but maybe surprised at how fast she's doing it uh, and the lift that she gives us and the way she goes about doing it. Um, and then just in general as a team that we've won eight different games under eight different types of preparation and probably six styles of play if you really break it down. So um, we found ways to challenge them. Um, I When we made this schedule, when we laid it all out, I don't think any of us – would have ever bet a penny of our paycheck that we'd be 8-0. Uh, it wasn't designed to be that, but it's the way it's worked out. And I think when the net rankings come out later in the week, I think we'll be rewarded for it. And then you said, you know, you've had to do a lot of different things in each of these games, but is it still – is it too early to tell, or do you have a sense of kind of what this team's identity might be, or how would you maybe define that? Well, I think we can certainly look at the evidence that we have for what it's been the last – the first eight games and and that's kind of hanging our hat on defense. Uh, it's the first time in my 10 years as a head coach that I look at all the national analytic rankings and our defense is ahead of our offense in those rankings. Like we're, we're in the top 15 in some of the defensive categories where we're normally in the three hundreds. We're one of the top two teams in the country in defensive rebounding percentages where we've been in the bottom two or three in the past. So you know, maybe maybe we've kind of got a little bit more of a not being a team that's trying to outscore you every single night, but also can lock you down a, a little bit. So I, I don't know that that continues. I think we've played good competition, a bunch of teams that are going to do well in their leagues when those leagues roll around. So we'll probably have to look back on it in the next little eight game segment. But for right now, I'm I'm really um, it's it's nice to have that balance of offense and defense. And I think. That's what we had to have to make that next step into the the next tier of the SEC and maybe hopefully playing deeper into an NCAA tournament than we have here. Courtney? Hey, Coach. Um, I know we don't like to talk about the rankings, but I do <laughs> want to ask you, I have to ask you, you know, you guys 8-0, you know, when the rankings came out, those eight wins were the most of any D1 team in the country. I think they still are, if I'm correct on that. But, you know, I just wonder from, from your perspective, from a team perspective, were you guys shocked by that? And do you use it as bulletin board material moving forward? We probably will, but I'm not shocked by it. I vote in the coaches poll and I've, I've been a head coach for 10 years now and, and the new coach in the league always gets assigned that duty. So that's why I've done it so many years. So I, there's just some inertia to it, Courtney, that you can't overcome. You know, there's teams that get ranked, so high to start the year, and then they don't lose. 
So there's really nowhere to go early on. Uh, if you're asking me if you think, do I think we're one of the best 25 teams in the country? I do. Uh, but I understand why the rankings might not lead to that because the preseason poll is based on who you have coming back and how you finished last year. We didn't win an NCAA tournament game last year. We had some question marks, and then I get that. I did not pick us in the preseason top 25 myself. So I don't – I'm not going to quabble too much with the coaches. I don't have any idea what the AP – I don't even know who votes all in that anymore. But um, I, I do – I am very interested to see the net that will come out later this week. Um, I use Massey rankings as well. I don't know if y'all use Massey ratings, but it's a very tried and true uh, measure, analytical measure. It takes love out of the equation, as I like to say. Uh, it takes uh, biases out of it. It's just math. Uh, and I think we're at 17 in that one. So I, I would like it for our kids. I would like it for our fans. I would like it for my assistants who can send out cool recruiting mail outs. But I will use it to continue to motivate our kid through this next little segment of games. We kind of break our games up in pods, and we've got a little four-game pod, starting with Troy and then going into Oral Roberts, Lamar, and Arkansas State. So um, let's see where we're at in two weeks. If we're not in there then, then – I will have to maybe send some apology letters to voters for something I've done to them unknowingly in the past. Well, if you're like that in two weeks, I'll be asking the same question. So <laughs> I'll have a little, I'll have a little better answer for you then I hope, but well, right, right now it's fair. I get it. It's, it's probably fair. It's, but it's really hard to break in early in the year because there's a number of teams that are playing challenging schedules and there are a number of teams that are not. And uh, coach, before I let you go, final question for me, um, just talk about Troy a little bit, what you see from this team. You talked about, Hey, might be nervous coming back from the paradise jam, playing a team, yeah. saw them, the men's team play. They're obviously a great program with all of their sports. How does the women's team look this year? Well, they, you know, they're an NCAA tournament team uh, parentally. They're picked to win their league. Uh, again, I believe if I remember correctly, Kylie would have to co-sign that for me. Boom. They're picked to win their league. <laughs> they have a really fun style of play. Their coach is a fire is very fiery. Um, they have been a team that a lot of people shy away from playing because they do have such a unique style. Uh, they've got a couple, maybe three at least SEC caliber athletes, players. Uh, they're very dangerous. They they're tested. She took them out to the West Coast. They played a lot of people. Um and I, I, I respect how she does it. I respect that she challenges her team. They will not be intimidated one bit uh, by the size of Bud Walton. And, hey, then, I mean, let's just not discount the fact that every time I stand up to yell a play, Chelsea's going to be over there telling her team exactly what to do. Um, you know, when I yell twirl side, she's going to know what twirl side is. We have not changed names. I'm not, I'm not smart enough to remember it, so I'm not going to count on my kids to have to try to rename all of our actions just because – Chelsea's going to know what they are, but um, it'll be a great atmosphere. They're good. It's a great game to come back home. Our fans haven't seen us in a while. Um, so it, it, it will be a fun, much like the men's game was last night. I think it'll be a war uh, into the last, uh, certainly for us, the last quarter for them, like it was last night, the last media timeout. But we don't expect anything other than that out of them. Play a lot of kids. Hard to prepare for. They play like 12 kids, and there's no uh, – she, unlike us, has not settled into a rhythm or a routine pattern of substitution. So we got a lot of prep work to do in these next two days. Thanks, Coach. You got it. Ethan. I think you froze. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh, here it is. Y'all try to remind me to stop rocking my chair like this. When I go back and watch it, it says it makes my mom dizzy. So <laughs> she has told me to stop. So if I, if you catch me, just somebody say you're doing it again. But my mom got on to me a little bit for my nervous tick and rocking my chair. So between that oh. and Porter avoiding Rex, we always have an entertaining. Yes. It's always entertaining. Uh, Ethan, you're back. Yes, I'm back. I don't know what happened. Um, 
my first question, Coach, is just um, I know you pointed to after the Kansas State game how y'all got to, you know, go snorkeling and ride on the catamarans and everything. But just where is the team chemistry at right now after a trip like this? Uh, just make sure you got your timeline right. It was before the game. It was not after. Uh, all we did after the game was pack up and head home. Uh, we went day of game. I don't mind telling people that. Again, got some flack from a lot of people for thinking that was a good idea. But if you know our team, they're going to play good if they feel good. They're going to play good if they're happy. The sun made them happy. Uh, I trusted them. They did what each of them needed to do, and they played well. But we were literally snorkeling and paddle boarding and um, sitting on a boat and getting sun. What, Callie? We were out there till 1.30, so eight hours before the game. Again, I just I'm just not of the philosophy that you take a team to the Virgin Islands and make them stay in their hotel room. I, I don't get it. Take them to South, take them someplace else. Sorry, I'm not going to disparage any state here, but take them someplace that's you don't want to be outside. You know, so uh, I think it's the best that we've had. I know it. I don't even think it. I know it is the best that we've had because I saw it on the plane on the way home. I saw it before we won. Uh, the championship. I saw it that day. We 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 made some progress down there. A lot of times in our in the past, you know, our team spent a week together. Didn't go so well. We anybody that's been around us, we've had some things. You know, you spend enough time with somebody, you get on somebody's nerves. But I think this group just kept coming together. And obviously, winning helps. I'm not going to sit here and act like the winning part doesn't help. But I also know that with us, if it's not fun and we're not doing it together, um, we're not as good. So we're going to keep keep that mentality going. Uh, I don't think there's any danger of us snorkeling or paddle boarding on Thursday prior to the game. Uh, but we're going to keep trying to find ways to keep it fun. Another question I have was um, Aaron, you know, in that Kansas State game made several really tough moves and scored. Um, just how – what would you say her confidence is at right now, just with how she's being able to finish on the court? Um, my guess is all-time high, too. You know, I think she's uh, got a lot of things. It's, it's like we tell these kids, when you get everything else in your life going in the right direction, your game usually follows – and she's matured. I mean, she's she knows how to handle everything now better. And she's, you know, as, as we get more experience, we learn how to deal with things. Like, you know, adversity never stops. You just get better at handling it. And I think she's gotten better at handling all those things. And uh, it's fun to see. You know, she's demanded the ball a couple of times, which is cool. Like, she goes, Coach, I haven't touched it in like four trips. And I was like, that's a good point. Let's draw a play up for Aaron. You know, I love that. Um, I, I don't I, – I get lost in the forest sometimes for all the trees. So, I love the fact that she's confident and her teammates have the confidence in her. I was drawing a play up the other night. It was going to probably end up with the ball shot on the perimeter. And somebody says, no, let's get it. Let's get eat the ball. Well, yeah, that's a good idea. So, uh, I think it's at an all-time high. When y'all get her next, ask her. Uh, y'all know she's a really kind of a quiet kid. But, boy, once you get her talking, she's like me. She'll fill up your – uh, recorder. So ask her, I, I think it'd be neat to see where she thinks she's at, but I know as a coaching staff, uh, we've got a lot of, a lot of confidence in, in how she's playing offensively and defensively. And then last thing I have is I know you already touched on it, but to have the top defensive rebounding percentage in the SEC right now, I know that adding some size helps with that, but a lot of that probably boils down to effort. Just um, what would you say is right now the um, what's helping y'all get, get all these rebounds? them holding each other accountable like that is something that they will get on each other about is not rebounding leaking out early um not making an effort toward the ball uh not making contact with your man if it's required um you know we we normally do a chart well into eight or ten games where we chart effort uh you'll have to ask coach Goldwire about this the next time it's normally a, a chart that she does and it's very very time consuming and very it's just labor it's got a lot of labor involved and I, I said after about three games I said I, I think we're I think we're good it's not an effort thing with this group I got a big hug from Lacey out of that so she 
Um, we normally have to chart it for 10 or 15 games before we get it instilled. It didn't take that long this year. They're holding themselves accountable for it. The size helps. Obviously, I'm not going to take any credit for them having that. And Sailor being a great defensive rebounder as Mac and Sam have really turned it into a uh, an art as well. I do think that, you know, we've made a little bit of change in our transition and that I've told them, you know, if you get the rebound, you can bring it up the floor except for a few people that we've identified have had issues doing that in the past. Uh, but there's a number of them that know if they get the rebound, they're going to get to bring it up the floor. Uh, so I think that provides a little extra incentive as well. But to go from the bottom, I mean, worst to first, we were by far worst at that stat in the last number of years to now ahead of a South Carolina team, which blows my mind, and an LSU team who's been dominating everybody they've played. That was a pretty cool stat that jumped off the page. Thanks so much. Yep. And then Porter, do you have one more? Yeah, I got I got two more follows. We got time for it. Yep. Um, you know, with Aaron and her struggles finishing, and then something clicked, and then Chrissy, you know, struggling shooting, and then things clicked. How do you think that's going to help y'all on down the line? Say Michaela goes on a shooting drought, or Sailor. I mean, how, how do you think it's going to help the team lift each other up, knowing that? they've been through the same struggles and come March or, or February kind of gets them out of the same funk. Uh, I think it makes everybody's job on the court easier knowing that it doesn't rely on them. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of pressure to to think that you have to make 50% of your shots for our teams to win. I don't think anybody feels that way now, especially if, if a team wants to guard us a certain way, then, then they've got confidence in the other kids to get it going. Um, you know, Sailor and Chrissy, they're new to our program. They want to – they're they're pleasers. They wanted to do well. You know, I, I just sent Sailor a screenshot of her last three games. Forget those first five. Take them off the chart. Let's start from here because uh, that's the shooter you are. Um, Short-term memory, you got to have it. Uh, but we're, we're still learning to play together. I don't care how old Mac is or gets. She's still got new pieces to play with. You know, um, it changes every year. It changes a little bit every game, but it it is got to make us hard to scout. I can't imagine how other teams are preparing for us, who they're deciding to, you know, primarily take away or focus on or, you know, put their best one on. Um, if you put our your best one on this kid, then that leaves your not best one guarding this kid, you know. And, and I had somebody down at the event say, man, you know, say there was shooting so-and-so and so-and-so coming into this game, we were just going to leave her open. It's like, well, that's a bad strategy. You should have watched pregame warmups <laughs> when she's making 38 out of 40 and know it's a matter of time. And it looks good coming off her hand every time. It's a matter of time. Um, and that's – it's hard to go out there. It is a really hard thing to do, you know, to go out there and, and get 10 to 12 shots a night when you're used to shooting hundreds or thousands a week. So it's the comfortability of a game and their teammates having confidence, but they have to perform to gain confidence. You can't just give them confidence, you know, like they say in the movies. You can't give anybody confidence. They have to earn it. And I think seeing it go through the hoop has helped. Um, and then when we get all, you know, five people on the floor at the same time, regardless of what combination that is that are a threat, um, your percentages of winning go way up when you have five scorers on the floor. Oh, you're, you're rocking, by the way. But um, <laughs> I'm rocking. There you go. Thank yeah. you. That, that's a good well, friend. That's a good friend. Everybody else just said, I mean, you know, let, let me keep making the same mistake over and over and over. So, no, the last thing I got, you you had touched before the season that you you did not want your team to peak too early. Do you think a little bit of that not being ranked have you know, attribute to if, if you're ranked, does that kind of make it to where the players might peak a little sooner or does that have anything any aspect of all from the players aspect of it I, I you'd have to ask them I, I it doesn't for me um I think I was making a mistake with our 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 timing of our calendar I think it's been on me um I was in a calendar I'm not making excuses I'm giving you a reason okay I was at a school where we played in tri, on trimesters out on the West coast. And it was different. And I couldn't just bring that same 
time t- t- timetable here to a school that's on court, not on quarters. And I was trying to make it fit and it just didn't work. And I, I think we did peak too early. Uh, we were playing our best basketball in late February, which is a bad formula with, as long as the NCAA tournament's still in March. So I, it was a mistake I was making. Um, I, I, it may have something to do. There may be a correlation to the rankings as well in their mind as to the motivation they have. But um, I, I think I was doing a disservice to some of our teams in the past for maybe getting them too much during the summer. We did a little less this summer. We did a little less in the preseason. I have Mike on. So <laughs> I was talking to y'all the whole time. I know. <laughs> Let's see what Hi. She says. Thank you for people. joining us. And you, nah. <laughs> they got it. <laughs> they're, they're doing their mic checks. They, they got to do their mic checks. <laughs> got to do mic checks. Got to do mic checks. <clears throat> So anyway, I, I don't I, I, probably so with players, but not so much with the coaches, Porter. Um, so appreciate it. Got it. And by the way, I'm going to start using a stool, so I can't rock. I, I just <laughs> I, change your environment. I read that in one of these books in this room somewhere. If you're if you got if you're doing a if you got a bad behavior, change your environment a little bit. So I'll get out of a chair that doesn't rock. Then then I'm sure I'll do this, but it'll be something different. Ali will bolt it to the floor. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, we'll do it in the media room next time. Maybe. In and, <laughs> oh, I've got my ticks there too. Believe me, I, I get <laughs> I get critiqued uh, by lots of people for lots of things. So, don't forget the last time you sat down on a bunch of chairs in the media room and went. I, yeah, I ain't doing it in front of you. Shaps in the room. I'm checking all chairs. I'm checking all chairs. I'm fully expecting that video to show up on some blooper reel at because I know it exists. Y'all are waiting for. Y'all are waiting for something when you really need it. I know it's it's and it's the danger of knowing that it's out there that really bugs me. Like when's it coming? When's that video coming? When, when the driveway one gets old. Oh, that's true. The driveway one's about to make a replay with all the ice coming. I think too. So I, I'm sure it's just a matter of time before that one gets recycled. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. See you Thursday, Thank you. Sunday. Right. See y'all. Thank you, guys. Thank you.